In President Biden's speech last Thursday, he began the speech by expressing his frustration with the uh, 80 million or so of us who have not gotten the vaccine. And he went out, he went on to lay out several uh, coercive measures to force vaccinated, unvaccinated people to get the vaccine, the people who have hesitated. The reasons for people's hesitation in getting the vaccine are varied. The question that on the minds of a lot of Christians is, is there a religious exemption? Is it, would it be appropriate for us to uh, refuse the vaccine on a religious grounds, uh, claim a religious exemption? Um, for religious, religious exemption to be valid, according to the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the objection must rise from religious beliefs that are sincerely held. Sincerely held religious beliefs, that's the standard. Now, since New York implemented their measures of uh, not allowing people to go to restaurants and, and uh, gyms and various other things, people have wondered, you know, that sounds a lot like refusing to allow buying and selling. And it reminds people of the mark of the beast in Revelation 13, 17, where people who refuse the mark are not allowed to buy or sell. And some people have asked, should we be concerned about this vaccine being the mark of the beast? Uh, and if you are concerned like that, could you claim a religious exemption on those grounds? Uh, my answer to that is if you can honestly say that that's a sincerely held religious belief that you hold in, uh, yes, you could, you could. But should Christians have that concern? Should Christians be concerned about the vaccine being the mark of the beast? Uh, I think fears of inadvertently receiving the mark of the beast can be quelled by considering the alternative in the book of Revelation. What's the opposite of the, of the mark of the beast in the Revelation? Uh, those who receive the, the beast's mark on their forehead and hands, they receive God's wrath in Revelation 14:11. The opposite of that is those who receive God's mark, God's seal on their forehead. And those people are protected from God's judgment in the book of Revelation. You can see that in Revelation 9.4. I find it very odd that there's so much obsession with figuring out the mark of the beast and worrying about the mark of the beast and comparatively little concern about figuring out the seal of God. <laughs> You'd think if there's a mark in the book of Revelation that will exempt you from, God, from God's judgment and God's wrath, that's the one, if, there's gonna be, if we're going to be obsessed about anything, that's the thing you'd think we would obsess over, figuring out that mark uh, rather than avoiding the beast mark. A mark on the forehead, I don't think that's talking about a literal thing, a literal tattoo or something like that on your forehead. It's the, the reference to the forehead, if you just look in biblical prophecy, the idea is of your thoughts and your heart, your allegiance. Where is your allegiance? Is it to the beast or is it to Christ? And that's the question of the book of Revelation. And it's one or the other. It's going to be one or the other. Uh, so a, a mark, if your allegiance is to Christ, you're good. You're good. Even if somebody tricks you into getting a tattoo or a, a chip or a vaccine or whatever, you don't have to worry about that. As, as, if your heart is devoted to Christ, you've got the mark, you've got his mark on your forehead and you're good. Okay. So uh, what about another objection? What about the body as the temple of the Holy Spirit or uh, in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 or purifying yourself from everything that contaminates body and spirit, 2 Corinthians 7, 1. I don't believe those are valid concerns either. Neither one of those passages has anything to do with health, protecting your body from physical harm. That's not what those passages are about. Those passages are about, uh, passages are about protecting yourself from spiritual contamination, moral contamination. And so those would not uh, have anything to do with this. If my employer came to me and, and said, I'm required to get the vaccine, I would object on religious grounds. It wouldn't be about the mark of the beast. It wouldn't be about the temple of the Holy Spirit. But I would resist on the basis of a religious objection. Um, and and the, a couple objections. The main one, the first one, would be on the ground of stewardship. And I think this one's very clear. Stewardship and wisdom. 
God has given us bodies and called us to use our bodies in his service and in the service of others. This is a servanthood model of Christianity. We are to carry out the Lord's work and serve people and serve God. Taking unwise risks with your health, with your body, is foolish. It's foolish. It's a way of, of living that God has forbidden. He's told us to use wisdom in the way that we live. Um, we, just as we should be good stewards of our money, we should be good stewards also of our health. In fact, you could argue your body is even more valuable than your savings. Uh, so COVID-19 for me is not a significant threat. If I were really old, obese, all the, all the risk factors, then it would be different. But for me, it's not, I've been exposed to it. It didn't hurt me. I, I'm, I'm just not the type of person that's very, big risk. There's a one in a million chance that maybe it could, uh, a little better than one in a million, but there's very, very remote chance that it could uh, do me harm, but it's, it's remote. Um, not a lot is known about the significant side effects of the vaccine. In fact, nothing is known about the long-term side effects of the vaccine, obviously, because it hasn't been around long. So nobody, people might claim to know, they say, oh, I've read the science or whatever. There's no, there's no experimental evidence. There's no way they could possibly know. We have to wait and see. Um, there have been many instances of perfectly healthy young people who have taken the vaccine and dropped dead, gotten sick, gotten illnesses that killed them, heart problems with young men. Uh, with uh, 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 one young woman was uh, was uh, com confined to a wheelchair and paralyzed. Um, there's there's pl plenty of instances of harm, harmful side effects, even death of the vaccine. Now, how significant are those risks? What is the likelihood of suffering some severe side effect from getting the, uh, the vaccine compared to the risk of a severe health problem with COVID? Well, I don't know. I have no idea. I have no way of knowing. Nobody has any way of knowing. The scientific research on anything connected to COVID has become so politicized that honestly, I have no trust in it. None, none. So much money and so much political power is invested in a particular narrative with regard to COVID that um, you just go back to 2020. Just last year, the number of clear falsehoods that were reported about COVID just made me say, okay, I, don't, I just don't trust them. Obviously, they're not concerned about telling the truth. So many of it, so many things they said, we, they knew for sure turned out to be completely false. And the way that they reported the deaths, uh, you know, somebody gets de decapitated in a car accident and dies of COVID. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, the, the, they've shown themselves that they cannot be trusted. So I'm skeptical about all the reports. If somebody came to me with a new investment idea. And they said, look, it's never been tested. There's no track record, but I guarantee it's way better than the stock market. You should take all the money from your 401k and put it into this, this scheme. <laughs> would I be wise to do that? No, no, that would be foolish. The wise thing would be to wait and see if there's a track record and wait and see if, the, if, if there's some results from it. It would be even more foolish to risk my health, even my life, on something that is an unknown risk. Especially when we know a fair amount about COVID, we know, we know very little comparatively about the risks of the vaccine. Uh, we have scientists assuring us, oh, don't worry, it's safe. Uh, but, but they're the same ones that told us all kinds of falsehoods last year. And, and especially when you have people with a strong financial interest or political interest in a certain outcome, of this whole narrative, uh, why would you consider them to be trustworthy? So that's one reason. I mean, that's all the reason I would need to claim a religious objection. That is a sincerely held religious belief. I believe I would be being foolhardy uh, and reckless with my health if I took the vaccine. So I'm not going to take it. Now, that's a judgment call. I wouldn't impose that on anybody else. I wouldn't look down on someone who got the vaccine and saying they're making a bad judgment call. I don't make I, it's not my role to make judgment calls for other people. Uh, it's only my role to make judgment calls for me. And so I, I'm, I make that for me. If, uh, if you believe that the vaccine is a, is a wise risk for you, then you should absolutely get the vaccine. And that should be a matter of conscience for you. 
So I certainly wouldn't look down on anyone for making a different call. I just have to make my own call. So that's one reason. Another possible reason a Christian might object to uh, the vaccine is to stand against oppression. And admittedly, this isn't as strong an argument, but I think there's something to it. The heavy-handed control of government officials in connection with COVID seems to go way beyond public health. It seems to me they're concerned about something beyond public health, obviously. Because, you can, I mean, 75% of the population, the adult population in the United States has been vaccinated. The other 25%, most of them probably had COVID and have natural antibodies. So basically, pretty much everybody's got some kind of immunity. And yet, uh, there's tw still twice as many... Uh, twice as many cases of COVID now as there were a year ago. So this vaccine doesn't seem to be doing that great a job. The motive behind pushing this vaccine seems to me it's got to be something else besides public health. Many politicians after the 2020, I think, just seem to be drunk with power uh, that they have to just, you just declare an emergency and you can do anything, anything. You can take away any right. You can violate anything in the Constitution. You can just do whatever uh, against the laws of the land under the guise of it's an emergency. I think that's dangerous. I think whenever you see that in history, it results in terrible government oppression uh, against uh, certain groups of people. And I think we should stand up against it. it. One thing we learned in the civil rights movement of the 50s is unless masses of people stand against that kind of thing, then it doesn't change. And so as a Christian, I feel like I have some responsibility to do my part in standing against illegal government oppression and power grabs to protect future victims of their oppression. And I, it's, not gonna stop, it's not gonna stop with COVID. COVID is just the means of getting it. Once they have that power, it could be used in all kinds of ways. And I think that that'd be foolhardy to hand those keys over to people in power. Now, is this a hill to die on? If the government came and threatened me with jail for preaching the gospel, I would preach the gospel. If they said, Daryl, you, you have to renounce what the Bible says about homosexuality, or we're going to throw you in prison for the rest of your life, I would go to prison. I would not renounce anything in the Bible. That's, I, I, for that matter, I would die. I would die before I would renounce something in the Bible that's clearly stated in the Bible. Would I die? Uh, before getting the jab? No. No, I wouldn't even go to jail. If it came down to they say, you, you, go, you, you get the shot or you go to jail, I said, all right, give me the shot. I would take it. Because, because <laughs> preaching the gospel, that's an undeniable command in Scripture. A judgment call, that's not 100%. It's a judgment call. And it, I could be right, it could be wrong. So, so I would not go to jail over this. I would not die over this. Uh, however, that doesn't make it any less a religious issue. It's still just as religious. It's still a sincerely held religious belief. And that's the only standard in the Civil Rights Act. The Civil Rights Act was meant to be very, very broad in telling employers, look, you can't do, you can't even come close to doing anything that might force an employee to violate his religious convictions. We're all about religious freedom in this country. And so, th so that act passed and it's it, rightly so. Rightly so. It shouldn't be a really strict uh, requirement of some religious thing. It should be just, if you can just say with a clear conscience, you have a religious uh, belief uh, that's sincerely held, that should be all that's required.